Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talk With the Titans live from London, UK, all the way to the US of A and worldwide. I'm your host, Callum L, and this is Talk With the Titans. Oh, man. Let me know, family. Are you with me? Yes, finally, you're with me. Um, I'm going to have to apologize to everybody out there. Um, you know, earlier on today, we did a couple of live streams, and it seems as though, um, you know, YouTube is not active at, at present. YouTube is not active at present. And what I mean by that is um, everybody is not receiving their notifications. And that's kind of crazy because it seems as though, no, oh, no, 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 no. I was about to say it seems as though it's happening right now, but I've just seen the the uh, the viewers have jumped up to about 97 people who are viewing right now live. Um, so, you know, I'm going to have to apologize on behalf of YouTube, okay? I know YouTube there is something massive that's going on at YouTube right now that could possibly be the issue. I doubt it, but let's just quickly um, highlight it for you guys, actually, that there is actually uh, an attack on you on the YouTube uh, center right now, or their YouTube headquarters, I believe in Florida right now, okay? There is an attack on the YouTube um, headquarters right now. Um, there is actually an incident being reported. Okay, so let me actually just show you guys this before we get into our official uh, uh, topic of today. Uh, here we go. So right over here on BBC, this is where I first got into it. Okay, so this is what's going on at the YouTube headquarters. I actually read an article earlier on as well, and it seems as though that somebody has been shot, okay? Somebody has been shot. They're even saying that the individual who is involved, i.e. the gun person, um, you know, is actually a woman, okay? Don't hold me on that, don't quote me on that. I'm just reading from um, certain sources as well. Certain Twitter sources have also stated that, you know, they heard this noise, they heard like everybody stampeding, they believed it was actually an earthquake taking place. So it seems as though everything is just unfolding right now within the last hour or so, um, you know, this has been happening. So hopefully we'll get some more information soon, okay, and find out what's going on with that. But really and truly, um, yeah, Reverend Simon Sideways needs your help. I saw, actually I was watching the video, I was actually watching his video before I actually um, started this live stream. I realized that we're running over time and we need to get this live stream going on. So I've actually, um, you know, started it. But I actually saw it's very interesting. I'm actually going to get in contact with him um, or him. Yeah, I'm going to try to email him. Uh, see if that can work. Um, watching as usual from New Zealand. New Zealand, loving what you're doing, Callum. Love. Thank you very much. So. Um, family, okay, I'm waiting for everybody to come in and join the live stream right now. I'm surprised that everybody hasn't actually joined or contacted me to jump on. Um, okay, yeah, it's very shocking. So, um, you know, a few people have asked for Jedi and Respect to come on to speak about this topic. Unfortunately, I believe Je Jedi and Respect are actually right now um, uh, boots on ground over in Tottenham at present, okay? They're over in Tottenham at present. Um, I received a message basically stating that there was going to be a, um, a meeting of solidarity. So I'm just gonna quickly read it out to you guys. In light, in light of the recent events in North London area and all the killings in London this year, we, we are calling all members of the community to come together in solidarity. Seven Sisters Tube Station, Tottenham High Road at 6.30 p.m. or 6.30 to 7 p.m. actually, they was looking to meet up, okay? The children need us. Please come out and show solidarity. Our communities are in crisis and we have to find solutions. Don't wait for it to be a loved one a loved one of yours before you act. Make this your profile pic and send to as many people as you can. Let's show the world and more importantly, the youth that we care, okay? So they are right now, okay, in Tottenham doing a demonstration at present, okay, at present. So I don't think that they will be able to come on. I will try to ring Jedi and see if he can um, say a few words to our audience members themselves. 
Um, but other than that, let's keep it flowing, okay? Let's keep it flowing. Uh, you know, I don't know how many people actually got to show, see the show that we did earlier on. So I did a live stream earlier on to kind of highlight that there is actually an epidemic that's taking place, okay? There's an epidemic that's taking place where a lot of our youths are being killed, okay? And it was quite shocking. I was reading a BBC article and it basically alerted us to the fact that, um, you know, knife crime, and gun crime. There's been more murders in the UK, in London, okay, more than um, New York. So hopefully I'm gonna try to pull up some of these sources to for you guys. Bear with me, okay, bear with me, all right? Because I'm kind of doing everything right now by myself, okay? Um, so let's see if I can just pull it up for you guys. So first and foremost, Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, no, let me try to get that for you. Let me try to get that for you. Just bear with me for a little while. Okay. So we've got, da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna share my screen. So it makes life a little bit easier so you can kind of see what I'm doing as well. So seeing my beautiful round, pretty face. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, Tom shooting. Okay, so this is going on, this is going on. Da, 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 da. Okay, oh, did I just pass it? Yes, yes. So I was actually reading this article today, which is quite shocking. They literally released about five hours ago, and they have basically stated that um, homicides in New York and London, okay, homicides in London has literally overtaken that which is which has happened in New York okay so New York has always been quite high in terms of homicides um, but as of late as of late um, it seems as though that London has overtaken okay January uh, New York was higher than um, London Okay, so in January, for example, the men investigated eight murders in London. The New York Police Department looked into 18 killings, okay? So there was a massive 10 uh, individuals difference. That's over about 120% difference, okay? Now, if we go over now um, into February and March, where is the, this is how I know I didn't come prepared. Okay, so in February, um, you know, the, the data kind of spread kind of sprang. Come on, why don't I have none of this information here with me? I apologize, family. I apologize, okay? I should really find this and, and start the show with proper information. Bear with me, okay? I'm by myself today. I don't have nobody bouncing off with me, okay? So if you guys would like to come in and actually uh, discuss this topic with me, this is what I'm actually going to do. So it makes my life easier because when there's more people on the panel, I get to multitask. But me by myself, ah, it's hard. It's hard out there. So let me see what I'm going to do. Um, if you go into the description box right now, go into the description box, you'll basically see the link for tonight's show, okay? You'll see the link for tonight's show. Go on there, click onto it, and come on and get involved with this topic, okay? Come on, get involved with this topic. So I'm going to share my screen to sh alert you to where exactly it is. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. So if you click on the link right here, Click on the link right here and get involved, okay? Click this link and get involved. Please, click the link and get involved. And it'll give me enough time to actually find the relevant information um, for us to have this dialogue today. So, again, I'm actually gonna, whilst we're waiting for somebody to jump on with me, okay, I'm actually gonna show you a video that I saw earlier on today that I tried to show, but unfortunately not much people um, got the notification okay so here we go so this was shocking to me i'm gonna quickly start it let's go these are some of the people murdered with knives this year in london 26 people so far, six of them teenagers. Their deaths have prompted frank words from one of Britain's top police officers. I do it. fear sometimes that because the majority of those who are injured or killed in certain communities and very often the black communities in London, it doesn't get the sense of negative 
that cap wage that it ought to do and really get everyone to a place where we all are doing everything we can to prevent this from happening. It's an enormous effort on our part. We're putting enormous resources in to try and stem the flow of the violence and having some success at doing that. But as I say, collectively, we all ought to look at this and see how we can prevent it. Okay. So, um, I'm going to leave that here. Pause it. Okay. Let me just leave that and get back into you guys okay and we're gonna actually open up to have a discussion so i see a few people have joined us right now if i can get you guys to actually mute your mic if you're not speaking uh but Shay, i'm gonna invite you on first since your mic is unmuted uh did you have anything to say okay i guess not so i'm gonna mute your mic okay please keep your mics muted and um please turn off the speakers or the youtube in the background okay um we've also got christian malik here as well uh peace you king how you doing yeah what's what's happening brother it's good did you have anything to contribute yeah, yeah yeah um this is a very um touchy topic uh for me because we 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 have lost um i come from a custom house um this is East London, and just in my road, Freemasons Road, um, we we lost three three young bucks. We lost three youngers um, in uh, just a year in the same road, and um, the knife crime is like a it's like an epidemic, and um, I I really don't know what to say about it, my brother. Um, it's just it's just I don't know, man. And now plus you got the acids, you got the acid, the whole acid thing now. So it's not just the knives. You got these little youngers throwing acids on each other's faces, and it's just it's just getting peak in it. And um, I don't know the solution, bro. I can't I can't say what the solution is, but all I can say is like real experiences. I have lost cousins. I have lost um, many people to gang, and sometimes just simple as postcode. Um, I think I think the music that that the young bucks listen to, I think it glorifies. Um, shanking like six seven and all of these gang music it talks about um, wetting man up and all of that and kids glorify that these days so um, it's a bit it's a bit sad bro okay. um, thank you and you know right now please everybody remember on talk of the titans we've got literally three rules to keep your mics muted at all times um, rule number two is one our titans is speaking, please respect their cipher and allow them to speak. And uh, rule number three is please, no profanities. We'd like to keep it a family friendly show, okay? Um, Excuse me? Yes, hello? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, uh, you remember me, right? Yes, yep, I remember you. Um, I've got to ask you a question. I was just asking you a quick question. Do you know, um, can you unblock me from the chat, please? Because no one's not seeing my messages. I don't know why I'm blocked. Because every time I want to ask a question, people can't see my chat no or text. No problem. No problem. Um, I'll look into that later on, okay? Did you have anything um, in terms of this topic to actually uh, contribute? Well, yeah, um, actually. Um, but, um, first of all, I've got a new mic. That's the reason why I sound better, so you can hear me properly. Number two is that, um, you know, with the problem that's happening um, in England, especially London, with um, the knife crime, um, the acid thing is quite new to me because I don't know where you can randomly buy acid. I don't know if it's like bleach or some chemical like for toilets or the bathroom that they use. But I'm just saying that it's getting out of control. And the other the other gentleman is right about how they idolize the behavior, like the this gang culture, how being like a roadman is cool. And to be honest, I thought being a roadman would be actually quite cool because technically that like, freedom, you can do whatever you want. But then I realized it kind of got consequences, like you get stabbed and stuff, and a lot of bad things happen, and the police are a lot involved. There. So I thought, like, um, nah, I, I won't get into that. Like, it's too much kind of risks that could happen. I can't stay away from that. I stick to my kind of life that I always stick to before. So I'm just putting my input. That's all. Okay. If that's helpful. Could I get Could I get your age? Where you're calling from, as well? Um, do you mean like location in London? Yes, yes. Oh yes, yes. Um, I'm 17. I'm I'm from Catford. Okay. Cool. Oh. Um, awesome, awesome. 
All right, um, if I can get you as well, um, I don't find you anywhere in the block list, okay? If your name is Professor in, inside of uh, YouTube uh, chat section. Professor Abalaska. Yeah, no, I haven't found you blocked at all, unfortunately. So I don't know exactly what's going on with that. Uh, but let me continue anyway. Let me continue. If I can get okay. your mic. Okay. So, um, you know, and I've actually got some breaking news as well, okay? I've got some very sad yet breaking news, okay? So if I can get you to keep your mics muted, I've seen uh, you need, I've seen who needs to go next. But um, yeah, I've got some breaking news, very sad news as well, okay? Very, very sad news. And let me quickly uh, share my screen with you. So if you are aware of what's actually transpired yesterday um, in terms of the shooting and the information that we received, um, you know, we have finally, um, unfortunately, got an extra news in the last 15 minutes, okay, that the second individual who was actually shot, okay, um, you know, literally for an hour's, hour's time frame, I don't know if it is related or non-related, but uh, he actually died, okay? The 16-year-old boy uh, dies after a girl killed in another attack. It says here, um, in the BBC article, it says here, a 16-year-old boy found with gunshot wounds within an hour of another fatal shooting in London has died. The boy was left critically ill after he was shot in Walmart uh, on Monday in an incident which also left a 15-year-old boy with stabbing injuries. The boy's death follows that of a 17-year-old girl named locally as Tanisha Melbourne, who was killed in Tottenham. Both attacks come amid concerns over rising violent crime in London. Police say the shootings are not linked. The Met Police said the 16-year-old boy died in hospital earlier with his next of kin present. The teenager who was stabbed has been released from hospital. Um, I'm going to finish off the article real quickly. The teen Tanisha, whose name has not been officially confirmed, was pronounced dead at... 2243 BST after a drive by shooting near Northumberland Park, Tottenham. Her death came as police were already at the scene two miles away in Warminster after being called at about 10 p.m. There have been no arrests in either investigations. Acting Lieutenant Detective. Um, CH Inspector um, Glenn Butler said, I fully appreciate the alarm, shock, and rev revulsion caused by this murder and other fatal shootings we have seen across London over the last few months. We are doing everything we can to identify the culprits and bring them to justice. Wow. Wow. That is shocking. That is actually shocking. Okay. Um, that's shocking. That's actually shocking. So crazy. Now that is actually crazy. That's crazy. Um, literally within an hour of each other, uh, two individuals were shot down fatally. Okay. Uh, the guy, uh, the 16 year old died today with family present in the hospital, 16 years of age, 16 years of age. The girl was 17 years of age. I'm just trying to think, what was I doing at 16 years old? What was I doing at 17 years old? Wow. Your whole life is ahead of you and it's snuffed out for what exactly? For what? What could you have done at 16 years old or 17 years old? to warrant you being shot and killed. What exactly? And the individuals who have done it as well has not only affected taking away somebody's life, but have taken away an entire family's, entire family's plural way of living. A whole community is being affected by this. This is sad. This is extremely sad. Um, and it's hurting me. It's hurting me. But the mere fact that I have uh, nieces, I have um, nephews, I have cousins, I have um, you know, people in my immediate family 
you know, that are of this age that have spoken to me about knife crime, gun crime, um, you know, the problems that's actually plaguing the community right now. And this could have been them. I'm pretty sure one of us in this audience, okay, at least one of us within inside of this audience um, would know or be affected directly um, by this attack, by this shooting, by these killings that's taking place. Um, let me open it up. Let me open it up. Um, I'm going to go to Buddha, then afterwards I'm going to go to Nikki. Uh, Buddha, did you have anything to say? Okay, um, if not, I'm going to go to Nikki right now. Nikki, just unmute your mic. Okay, unmute your mic if you can. Can you hear me, bro? Yeah, I can hear you. Cool, cool. I just wanted to um, just read out a few statistics so we can maybe talk about Sadiq Khan's involvement in this whole thing. So basically, let me just leave you with this. I won't take up too much time. No problem. It says, Khan was elected London Mayor in May 2016. In less than two years in the job, he has made London overtake New York as one of the most dangerous major cities in the Western world. Okay. I think he's um, unfortunately dropped out. Um, but that by itself was just a blow. <laughs> that by itself was a blow. Um, you know, London quite possibly could be one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Could possibly one of the, be one of the most dangerous cities in the world. You have gruesome attacks. I've, I literally was reading um, a comment left today from somebody in America, you know, where their crimes in terms of involving, um, you know, violence could be shootings. Okay, but we have these youngsters that are carrying these knives, these boars, these daggers, and are literally running through other human beings like it's nothing. And not once, not twice, but in some cases, 10, 15 times. And if you see some of these attacks that have happened literally, um, you know, 15 minutes down the road from me, and you see what they're doing, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's savagery. It's gruesome to actually watch. I'll be watching these videos that people are sending to me that this is happening on my road right now. Like just within the last hour, this happened with these youngsters, 16 to 21, are carrying her out knives as long as your forearms. And are just slicing their way through other human beings like it's nothing without no care, without no value for another person's life, without no repercussions, in broad daylight, as a matter of fact, broad daylight, this is taking place. And I always wonder, but why? Why would you do that? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to throw away your own life? Why would you want to throw away somebody else's life? Over what? over a social media post, over some small debt. Some of these debts are 100 pounds, under 1,000 pounds, and you want to throw away another human's life for that. Some of these things are just to do with, you know, females. You want to throw away another human's life and your own life for what? It baffles me because they looked at you funny, because they belong to a different postcode, then you, your family doesn't even own their own house, let alone a business or properties in the area, but you're fighting over postcodes. What sense does that make? Are your postcodes bringing money into your pocket? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. What exactly are you fighting over? And what are you fighting for? But anyways, um, Nikki, you're back. Um, if I can get you to finish off reading uh, what you had set it out to do. Yeah, sorry, mate. I don't know what happened there. No problem. Yeah, it says basically, in that time, 
The number of violent acid attacks in London has soared by more than 78%. Parliament recently revealed that Britain's capital has more acid attacks per capita than any other city in the world. Once an evil phenomenon confined to the savage lands of Asian Muslims, the practice has been introduced here to enrich British culture. Last year, there were 397 victims. Separate figures show the number of victims rose from 281 in the whole of 2015 to 487 in the 10 months of October to October last year. It also says the data obtained from the Met Police under the Freedom of Information request also revealed younger people are more likely to be victims of acid attacks with more than 50% of offensive involving victims aged between 10 and 29. Most victims are also male. 351 in the 10 last, hold on, in the last 10, hold on, in the 10 months last year with the percentage of female victims falling significantly in the last 10 years. It says from the years 2015 to 2017, homicides in London rose by 30%, youth homicide jumped by 70%, serious youth violence was up 19%, Robbery was up 35%, while home burglaries rob while home burglaries rose by 19%. Theft went up over 10,000 incidents in a year, up 40%, and there were more than 4,000 additional knife crime, knife crime incidents under Khan that under his predecessor arose from 40%. It says rape in the capital rose by 19%, while there were 2,500 incidents of gun crime represent an rise of 17% of the previous year. Hello, are you still there? Yep. Can you hear me, Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Sorry, almost done, mate. It says, the problem here, sir, it's while open and honest media outlets don't reveal actual figures, lie in the government's police cuts. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the statistics. London has lost just 1,000 officers in the past year, 3% of the force, reducing it from 31,000 to 30,000. The strain has been made greater by police forces taking officers off the streets to search instead for online social media hate speech. It's in quotes. Prior to Khan's disastrous tenure as London mayor, the Conservatives had reduced the number of deaths of young people from 30 to between, to between 10 and 15 per year a more than 50% reduction. This is a huge story. Why isn't Sadiq Khan facing media pressure on this? For the same reason the media is silent on Sweden, Venezuela, South Africa, and the rest of those countries spiraling into hellhole status as a result of its left-wing government's incompetence, lies, greed, and wickedness. Anti-social behavior calls, one so the brackets 1.2 minus 1.2 percent domestic abuse incidents minus four percent domestic abuse with injury minus one percent non-home or business burglaries minus ten percent criminal damage minus one 1.6 percent and disability related hate crime minus 34 percent basically what i'm trying to say is you've got to look at the significant jumps from the last mayor to this mayor You've got to say to yourself, there's got to be some sort of hidden agenda. Why? Why such a significant jump? Why such? Why such the huge? It's not just a, it's not just a small jump. It's it's a huge jump. <laughs> That's pretty much it, really. I just wanted right. to read them off. I won't take up any much time. I'll pass it on now. <laughs> That's, that's some crazy uh, figures and statistics. Um, thank you. I would love for you to stay on still. Um, stay on, please. Um, I have multi everybody, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a lot of interest on this show. So, again, family members here, yeah? if you would like to come in, I need to, I need to check that. If you would like to come in, okay, all you have to do is please, please, please yeah, go down below in the description box, okay, and click the link dump on and i would love to hear your voice on this okay this is uh something that's affecting all of our communities across the uk okay? 
across the world as well. So I would love for you guys to come on, don't matter what, if you're in Australia, if you're in Germany, if you're in Europe somewhere, if you're in America somewhere, Canada somewhere, I still want you to come on. I still want you to have your voices actually heard. And I wanna speak about uh, the issues, that's um, the problems and the issues. And also I wanna find some ways of, you know, some solutions. How can we actually prevent this? What, what type of, um, you know, what type of, my mind is gone, you know, my mind is gone. It might be too late for me again. But um, yeah, we need to solve this issue. So let me get in uh, Buddha. Buddha, please jump in. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Callum. Um, it's a story, sorry state of affairs. Um, you know, I can't be a hypocrite. Um, when I was younger, I was involved in this type of thing. Uh, but in regards to solution, we've heard so many things over the years from police, from government, from all of these people. But right about now, we need to take action, literal action. And one thing I admire is uh, Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. What they were doing in L.A. Um, to clean up their area during the late 80s and early 90s when there was a crack epidemic. These, these community leaders, Al Sharpton, uh, Jesse Jackson, all of these figureheads didn't just talk about it. They actually got up, got out of the streets at night time and were saying to kids, what are you doing? It's 10 o'clock at night. You're 15 years old or you're 14 years old. What are you doing here? Haven't you got school tomorrow? What possible reason could a 15 or a 16 year old have for being on the street at say two o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the morning? There is no reason. They should be at home. We need to we need to start implementing stuff like that. Some of our, our community leaders need to, to do start doing things like that. I want to see um Mr. Khan, the mayor of London. I want to see him out on the street stopping, saying, Listen, what are you doing? We as the community need to be doing that. If we need to start gripping up kids and searching them to see if they've got knives, then we'll do that. Okay, it's illegal. We're not allowed to do that. But what would we rather get heat from the police or let our, our, our brothers and young sisters and young brothers die? Because that, that's what it needs. It needs drastic action to, te tr uh, to treat a, a tragic state of affairs. That's, that's what I think. We need to start being on the street, being visible, gripping up kids who are walking around at one o'clock, 12 o'clock at night saying, what are you doing there? Go home. If you have to get a transit van and throw you in the back of the van and take you home, then we'll do that. If your parents don't like that, they can come and tell us something. Because the bottom line is, why are they out on the road? That's what I think the solution needs to be. Something along those lines. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep you there for a little while. Daniel, are you free? Hey, hey can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I was just trying to sort out Google Hangouts, first time I've ever used it. Um, yeah, so obviously I've been listening, and um, I think the problem is a lot bigger than people think. I think um, the main issue in this country is the police and the fact that criminals are kind of getting away with murder. And it seems to me that, like, the reason there's so much crime, the reason there's so much, you know, going on is because people are getting away with it. Like the police have become more scared to say like, I don't know, a 15 year old boy had a knife. They'll be more scared to arrest him because it's illegal to touch un you know, underage or, or bring race into it or religion into it. And, and it's like the police here are too scared to act. I know for a fact people that have got away with things and they shouldn't. And it just seems to me that in this, in this country, the police are too scared. And I, you know, I know the whole gun thing in America is a bit crazy at the moment, but I think that police should be carrying guns because it does scare criminals. Like if you're a criminal and you go around, you know, doing something dodgy, if you know the police have got a gun and they're going to shoot on sight, if, you know, I'm not saying, I know it's, a lot of people have different views on guns, but authority figures should have it because at the moment, it seems to me the criminals are winning and the police are losing, if you know what I mean. And that's that. That's what I think, and it's sad because you know life is so special and important. And to sit here every day about kids dying, like like you were saying over postcodes, it's just it. it who cares where you're from? You know, it's it, it's stupid, and we need to start looking after the next generation. And I think in this country, the police have to stop thinking politics and 
start being harder on people because people are getting away with crime and you know people can do something go to jail for six months and in jail it's peace you know people actually don't mind going to jail and then they come out and continue do you know what i mean but that's that's where i'm coming from um excuse me yep go ahead um i was about to say but why not lose tasers i mean like we already know in america that they lose a lot of guns and they end up killing a lot of people and they say they fear for their life but i'm just still don't get why don't you lose tasers yeah i mean tasers like an easier safe way i mean it, it might might hurt the victim and it's not going to kill them or give yeah. them severe injuries i, I mean it's not just i mean it's not just like to um 17 year olds you know it's like it's down to 12 imagine someone just hear on news at a 12 um got they got shot on the news like it's, it's getting tasered bad enough but getting shot like imagine how hearing oh my son got shot like they're gonna get they're gonna go crazy like they're hearing that yeah it might have a bad thing but like shooting is like that's too hard yeah, yeah the police right. might get too hard but still like at least lose something like a taser because i never hear people say oh let's lose tasers on these people or lose tasers on these youth or children I've never okay, heard that. You know what? Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, well, the police and using tasers won't help because most of the incidents when the police turn up is after the fact the kid's already been stabbed. Yeah, the, the, the police are in on road watching watching kids. There's not enough, there's too many kids and not enough police. So unfortunately, I don't think that solution will work. Can I come in? Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, go ahead. What? Sorry. Someone else jumping in? No, go ahead, Shane. What it is, right, is we're coming back to this old-fashioned attitude whereby the police officer would give you a clip around the ear. Remember that sort of attitude? They used to say, oh, the police officer could give you a clip around the ear and deal with the problem. Well, as a young lad, I resented the police officer touching me because, by law, he had no right. Now, let's not ask what the government's going to do or what the police is going to do what are the parents and the community as a whole going to do about these, this problem? That's what we need to do. It's in the hands of the parents. You bring the children back to the parents' house and they don't care. Then at the end of the day, the child's running wild. We need parental and community consideration in all this. Not direction from the police or the government because they're not responding. Spot on, spot on, exactly. That's exactly where I would like to go with this conversation. Because I hate, okay, I hate having to blame external forces. I hate having to blame the government. I hate having to blame uh, the police services and so forth, okay? Because I feel it for the police, okay? I feel it for the police. And I know it's gonna be, this is gonna be very controversial. Oh, why are you on the police side? No, I'm actually on the police side as well. And the reason why I'm on the police side is this, okay? And one incident, we're saying, um, you know, our youths are being stopped and searched and it's getting too much. But now that stop and search has gone down, we're realizing that knife crime and gun crimes have actually risen. So it, there is such a delicate balance the police actually has to play. Um, you know, it's, I think it's actually unfair on the police at, cer at certain times. Fair enough, they do abuse their powers um, where, where, you know, you know, of course power can actually corrupt you. So it's fair enough, yeah, they do do things a little bit too far. But at the same time, we actually need the police in place to actually police the community. But I don't even want to speak about the community. I'm sorry, I don't want to speak about the police. I don't even want to speak about the government. I actually want to bring it back home here yeah, to us as a community itself. What I mean by this is, okay, again, if a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old um, stabbed my son, okay, I'm not even trying to look for justice from my son's, uh, you know, stab. Um, you know, the person who wounded my son. It's not even him that I'm going after. I want to go after the parents, okay? I want to go after you as a parent because where were you? Where were you? And some of the parents, okay, um, I'm not going to say this is just, you know, widespread, this is how it is, but some of the parents, okay, know that their children are involved in crime. They know it. 100% they know it, but yet they're not speaking up. Yeah, they're not doing anything about it. Yeah, they're even covering the tracks of, of the um, children involved. They're hiding, um, you know, uh, weapons. They're actually, you know, cleaning up, you know, after them and so forth and so forth. Like the, the parents at sometimes are complicit. And I'd rather not, yeah, the, the policing, 
Like for the police to police our community, I'd rather not that be the, the first point of protocol. I'd rather us as a community police ourselves, okay? We should have a, a right to self-determination. We should have the right to, to have um, a power of, of governance for ourselves inside of our own community, okay? We should only be going to the police where it's gotten to, the, to a stage that we ourselves cannot handle it, okay? To a stage that we ourselves cannot handle it. I want our parents to be policing our children. Now, what do I mean by this, okay? You're complaining about your children being stopped and searched outside on the roads. How about you stop and search your child before he leaves or she leaves to go out somewhere? You know that they're going to a party. Stop and search them. Frisk them down. See what they yeah, yeah. got. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's, there's a problem there. When I used to sneak up, my dad used to check me for cigarettes. When I used to come home, I'd patch them up outside. I had no cigarettes on me. He knew I was smoking. He could smell it, but he couldn't find them. When I went outside, I picked my cigarettes up. Later on, it was the same thing with the knife. The knife was patched up somewhere. You go on a council estate, you find knives are patched up. They're not on the people, but when the people need them, they're there. You see, what it, what it is, right, is this, it, it, I could put, the government is not supplying anymore. We used to have community centres. I mean, I, I believe Sarah's having an interview with Lee Jasper. Now, Lee Jasper, his son was also a victim of a stabbing. So there should be some good insight coming from that interview in that direction like here yeah. but okay but we, we we just ain't taking we, we, we're adults and we're sort of giving responsibility to children these days we want to give them the vote and everything we want to turn them into miniature adults but yet they haven't got the knowledge nor the understanding nor the guidance there's no one in this country standing up speaking all we've got is rotten people uh, who, who are giving a rotten example and we've got the rotten media that is not even offering any support or, or questioning anything. You know, the other day I was watching, it, this is taking it out of this country, but still coming back to the violence in the world like it, a situation in the Congo, where children were getting massacred and, and their hands chopped off by adults. This is just pure craziness going all around. And the government, is this government is involved in all this, it's involved in the community here that's, that's attacking each other. They're doing nothing to save us. We must save ourselves. We must stop these this, this divisions to which we have in our society, whereby a person is now a black person, a white person, a gay person, a disabled person, a tall person, a small person. We are the person. By being the person and acknowledging ourselves, we can become the people of the human race. We can take all this racism and everything, remove it out of the hands of the government. Because racism, black and white, all that is ideology created by the government. It's not a truth. That's, I'm telling you now, I've grown up all my life, I lived in my community, no man, no Muslim, no Christian, no Hindu, no Jew, no nobody can tell you that I've ever caused them issues. I've been one and fair to everybody, you know why? Because I look at them as a person, and I'm sometimes sad when they look at me as being just a white person, because then they're putting baggage on me. But a lot of people where in my community just look at me as a person, and I'm a person, and I see the people. And that's what hurts me. When, when people ask, what side am I on? Man, I'm on the people's side. I'm on my community side. All the people. I love the people. And this is the problem. My community is getting destroyed by, by rubbish, garbage music. Once upon a time, music used to say something. But you know why reggae music got banned in this country? Because it's classed as homophobic and all this. But it wasn't. It was truthful music that was saying it to the point like smiley culture, tran copy translation. Iron Butty Man. That's illegal now. You can play that record now. But at the end of the day, smiling, rest in peace, Smiley. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, Emmanuel, rest in peace, man. You know what I'm saying? You see, once music used to speak for us, we walked, we, we built bridges, people, from rock and roll days, like, yeah? We, we built bridges. We crossed bridges. And then what happened was in America, they saw that the music was carrying us away from them, right? From the control of the government. And the divisions. And once we got united, they knew that the government, government days was going to be numbered. So they allowed music to become segregated and using certain words to which I cannot say. I could sing all the music from from, from Tipper Ivy all the way through to Aretha Franklin, James Brown, uh, Luther Vandross, but I can't sing some of the music that is being sung today. That's segregation. 
That's separation. And there's the ignorance, you see. The group is just being influenced by the ignorance. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, give me one second, family. One second. Okay, family members, okay. Um, I would love for you guys, okay, to hit the like button. Hit the like button like crazy, okay? Um, don't just hit it once, hit it twice. No, hit it three times, okay? Because we already know if you hit it once, okay, and then you hit it a second time, it goes off. So hit it three times, okay? Let me know that you really love the show. You really love hearing uh, the voices from, you know, all the different parts of our British community and beyond because we have people come calling in all the way from Asia, all the way from America, all the way from um, Africa, all the way from in Europe as well. So please, um, if you love the diverse panels that we do have, you do love the conversations and the dialogues and discussions and debates and the topics that we're raising, please hit the like button as well. And if you can, just hit the share button, share this link here um, with the rest of your friends and your family members as well. Get them involved with the conversation, okay? I've already said it, okay? If we, as a community, don't come together and try to solve the problems, okay, we are part of the problem. We are all culpable, okay? All of us, okay? All of us. We all need to take responsibility. It's no use um, put, you know, pointing fingers and blaming it on you know, other people. I'm not, I'm not down for that. I'm not down for that. If there is a problem in the world today, okay, it's me, myself, to blame. Because no matter what, I can do something. I can do something. If I can't physically do it, okay, I can talk about it. I can have a conversation about it. I can try to spark something off. I've got a platform here that I would allow anybody and everybody to come on, to have their say, and let us know what is going on in their world, in their own personal world. I found out about a lot of things by literally speaking to different people on here. I found out about the grooming gangs that's taking place in various um, parts of this of this country that I would have never known about before. You know, I recently got, um, you know, I recently heard about acid attacks in the UK. I never knew such a thing was going on before. I'm living in my own bubble, okay? Apologies, I'm living in my own bubble. I wasn't even aware. I've seen um, little programs on it, little documentaries on it. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, that's kind of crazy. But when I saw the statistics, the statistics, of what is taking place, what's actually happening. It scared me. It scared the living daylights out of me. That you could literally be walking down the street and somebody out of nowhere can throw acid on your face. Yeah, I had it. I, had, I was attacked by acid in 2010. It was aimed at my face. But lucky enough, I, I, was, I, was, I was lying down and it aimed at my face. And lucky enough, I jumped up and it caught my leg. I'm telling you, it burnt, it burnt my jeans off. It burnt through my leg. Uh, the scar on my leg was unbelievable. I'm telling you, it is unbelievable stuff like when they throw that on you. Crazy. And that, so we're actually, I'm saying this is crazy. We're actually speaking to somebody who's been a victim of acid crime, of an acid attack. We're actually speaking to, like, we know individuals right now in our community, in the Titans TV community, who's actually been affected. We see it's a spiteful attack, isn't it? A knife yeah. attack can cause a seriousness, but if you want to be spiteful by putting that in someone's face, and the way we treat disabled people with facial injuries, to find someone who's been scarred like that, you know how they're going to be treated. So it's a spiteful attack. That's what it's intended. That's why it goes for the face. And it's so easy to carry around in a Lucas Aid bottle or something. You know what I mean? Unless the police is going to pull up, pull up all the bottles and go stick in their nose in it. You know what? Um, just just to kind of reiterate something, if I may, um, acid attacks ain't something that's new. Again, you know, I can't no, be a hypocrite. I mean, 2010. With even further back than that, um, you, many of you guys may remember Jif Lemon. Comes in a little squeezy thing that looks like a lemon. Uh, That's you right, have a yeah. You have a screw top on it. People used to empty it out, fill it up with ammonia, close it back up it, and plug it. And that was that was for weak people. If you couldn't have a tear up, if you, can, you couldn't go and have a stand up with somebody. You pull it up, you squirt them, do what you got to do, and then go. Yeah, that's that's been going on for time of memorial. That that's nothing new. Knives ain't new. The teddy boys used to roll around with razors and all the rest of it. It's bike gangs used to carry knives. It's nothing new. The problem is 
with, with the community nowadays, it's so easy just to go and stab someone. Back in my day, you'd have to think twice about stabbing, stabbing someone because you, you're going to get heat from the police. Nowadays, people just go and stab people just <laughs> like it's nothing. Get into an argument, instead of having a fist to cuffs, you, have, you pull out a knife and, and shank someone. Well, yeah, it made no sense. It's like a walk a soft in the park. Daryl is a soft place. I mean, if you're an old person and you're freezing cold, yeah. you've got no human rights. You're in jail and freezing cold. They give you compensation. Jail's a joke now. You know what I mean? Them boys have got it easy. And when they go in there, they're just meeting the people that they all know. And then they come out, care about the community, and then go back in. Shay, is it possible to fix your mic? You know, because you're saying some incredible things right now, but your mic is just letting it down. So if you could Sorry. Just... Sorry, bro. I know this is... Oh, let, me, let me pull this one. It's like a cycle, my guy. Hold on is one second. Really one second, Professor. I'm going to get you in. It sounds a bit better, yes. Um, real quickly, I just want to shout out of everybody who's actually tuned in right now. I've got, um, you know, my elder right now, Big Bro, is in the uh, chat section right now. Please uh, send out your love and your salutes to Big Bro. Of course, John McDermott is in the building as well. Saracen is in the building as well. Academic Screeching is in the building. Um, Liquid Sky, I'm seeing you guys. Pence One, I've seen you going in. And of course, Kiss Spence is in the building as well. So, um, you know, love and shout out to you guys for holding it down and actually keeping the chat section um, rich with conversation. And, um, you know, I appreciate you guys. I really do. Um, again, I actually want to speak on solutions, okay? And I would love, can we do this, okay? Especially, especially um, you know, those people inside of our community. You know who I'm speaking to right now. I would love for you guys, yeah, if we can all come together, okay? Um, certain conversations doesn't need to be had online. It doesn't need to be had by YouTube. We need to sit down, okay? Okay. Seems as though there is some background noise. Sorry, Shay. There's some background noise. Um, I'm willing, okay, to put some money down. Okay, I'm willing to put some money down, um, rent out a, a meeting place with inside of a hotel or somewhere we could all go, okay, and we can sit down and we need to create a think tank. We need to create a think tank. Think think tank, okay, that can actually address the issues that are taking place with inside of our community. Okay, we need to create a think tank. We need to reach out to the people who are being affected by these heinous uh, crimes, okay? And figure out the mentality of uh, the perpetrators. Figure out the mentality of the community. Figure out the mentality of the culture that allows this to continue. We need to figure it out. We need to come up with some solutions and we need to push forward our agenda and make sure that we can change the policies and the community, because this is this is serious, okay? This is actually serious. If we've had 27 now, 27 murders, okay, in the past uh, three months, 27 murders in the past three months, we've overtaken uh, New York. London has overtaken uh, New York for uh, murders in the, in the capital right now, okay? If we can do that and we've only reached, okay, um, three months in to the year, Imagine what's going to happen. That's what I'm going to say to you. Just imagine when summertime her reaches, just imagine what the figures are going to be like. Okay? Just imagine. I don't even want you to imagine. That's like a nightmare. And the worst thing about it is it's not even a nightmare that you can wake up from where you could say, say yeah, things are going to be okay. No, this is a nightmare that is actually real. Babies are losing their lives. Individuals, you know, 17 years of age, 16 years of age, I remember, you know, it's like, yeah, finally, provisional license, NI, all of these things there, I can legally work, even though I was working from beforehand, I can legally work, 17 years of, of age, I was like, wow, okay, I'm doing my driving um, lessons, you know, I'm in college right now, you know, it, it, life was beautiful, you know, I got my, my first car at the age of 17, like, I was working, you know, it was, I was good. I had my whole life ahead of me. I just imagine there would have been no Callum L at the age of 17. If that was me, like that could have been me, that could have been my life just snuffed out. I just imagine that could have been a Sarah. That could have been an Ali Dawa. That could have been a Muhammad Hijab. 
that could have been um, a speaker's corner UK, that could have been any one of us living in London, living in an urban environment, and our lives just being snuffed out for the sake of what? For the sake of maybe a mobile phone, a robbery gone wrong? For the sake of, I don't know, how much money is in your pocket? I don't know, you might be at the cash point, you could have possibly drawn out 300 pounds. Like, I don't know, is that really? You know, it's 300 pounds. I don't know how much is a phone. Like, really? Is that really worth taking somebody's life? Tell them, how old are you? How old are um, you? 30, 30. 30. It's just, when was you growing up? I can't work it in my head, sorry. Did you have social media like now? Yeah, mobile phones and smartphones and everything. Um, At the age of 16, not really. Not really. So you had a life. Mm. So you've got, you know, you know what I'm saying? These kids are all sitting at home starting half these wars. You know, all this spite starts. Someone gets, do you know what I mean? Like, like when we was young, we used to have a little push and shove like with each other. But now it's put on social media and then you're put into a shameful situation nationally and worldwide and you have to respond. And the only way you can do that is to stick someone without fully realizing the consequences that you're going to end up in jail. But then if they know half the people in jail, they probably think it's no way, it's a better place than outside. Because it's still with the pros. Just going on what you said, Callum, earlier on about renting a place out and that kind of thing. You know what? I would like to see the people that, the artists, those drill rap rappers, the grime artists, those are the guys who, are, who hold responsibility, some responsibility for some of this action that's seen on the street. They need to be going out there on the street and stopping this. Yeah. This is what I was just about to bring up. You know, they need to go out on the street in transit vans, yeah? Pulling up people on, on road, pulling up kids on road. If you got to search them, search them. Yeah, it's illegal. Yeah, you're not allowed to. But guess what? You need to do things like that because you are you have a responsibility for, for the actions that come out of your mouth. You know what we said a few weeks back? Let's have actions. Let's have consequences. Yeah? You're, you're, you're a good man. You're educating people out here. Right, yeah, you you want to go out there and try and make a think tank and all. So what? These, these other guys get away with it. They're making money off of people's deaths, literally. It, 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 that can't fly. That cannot fly. I know. I know people are gonna say, "Yo, vigilante, vigilantism is not the way forward." But I look at, I look again. I look at the Nation of Islam, Farrakhan, even the Sikh community in Birmingham. I look these people and you know what they pull they pull together as a community and they sweat out their, their their youngers. We need to do that as a community. Could yeah, work in the place. And when the parents turn around and say, Oh, why did you grip up my son? Why did you search him? You're not allowed to. I'll turn around and tell the mother, hey what, why was your kid on the road for me to search him? Why wasn't he in bed? Why wasn't he out of school the next day? I know it's cold, I know it's harsh, but you know what? Those kind of things need to happen if we really want to stop it. But well, maybe that's where people could be like the community officer. Instead of the community officer coming in from outside, actually parents and, and, and the community coming together to have people who could walk. That, 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 that is happening, isn't it? We cannot rely on the police to, to sort out our community. That's our community. We need to sort out our community. The minute we start asking police to do the job that we should be doing, we're lost. Yeah, but when we ask the police to do the job, they want to make money. They want to make money for their cause, and then that creates problems. Listen, do you ask the police to come and babysit your picnic? No. Yeah, can, can I bring something up about the the music issue that people are saying? Um, like, I'm 34 now, and when I was growing up, like, I'm a massive hip hop head. Like I'm strictly nineties gangster rap, hip hop, NWA. And I'm, I have never ever tried to be violent, try to be a criminal because I listen to that music. But the, the. Yes. Grime where did art, come from? That's the question. Yeah, I know. And a lot of the grime artists I'm seeing today that are representing like London. I actually. What, what, kind type, of, of, what type of community did you grow up in? Yeah. Like a, uh, I would say council estate projects. No, no, like yeah, not from that place. But I think exactly. so. I don't really think you can speak on it too well because 
yeah influence from hip-hop in our communities is a lot different like you see that you see the trap artists you see the drill artists you see them with the you see them with the gucci belts you see them with the gucci trainers and when you ain't got shit, the only way you can go and get them items is by trapping is by selling yeah. weed selling drugs committing robberies so the influence is there and it's it is a big problem I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same as you i love all that music i've grown up on it it's the only music i listen to but it's a big yeah. problem yeah and you know what like i'm hearing what you're saying because um, it's, quite I, much it. it's a big problem yeah because yeah, i see nowadays that people have become sheeps people you know if there's a, a stupid trap song that's mumble and says nothing if someone likes it a million other people like it people have become sheep especially with social media like the guy mentioned everyone jumps on the same thing and because crime is becoming i would say like more popular more people are involved in gangs where uk was not really a gang culture that i know in la it's different but here it wasn't like that but now everyone's becoming sheeps and i do actually think the music is nowadays causing an issue where maybe it wasn't when i was growing up because it was just fun like when we used to listen to eminem we we won't do what he would say but nowadays these grime artists are, are sounding real and people are kind of looking up to them and want to be bad and i i'm kind of in the middle i don't know how we're going to fix this because it seems to me that it can only it's only getting worse and more people following trends and more people becoming you know into crime and i, I don't know what we can do but I hate it. I hate it. I wish we could flip it and everyone could just start getting along. But yeah. It's politics, isn't it? You see, politics, whether it's right wing or left wing, it makes no difference. They will pull you one way, left wing will create a victim, and the right wing will abuse the victim. And that's the way it is. And if you want to put a, a Muslim in the middle, the left wing will make him a victim, and the right wing will. Will we victimize, victimize him, shall I say? This is the way it's all going. You see, we're, we're being pitted against each other. There's no direction, there's no coordinates. We're not a nation of people, we're a nation of nations, nation of tribes, nation of gangs, a nation of, of, of individuals segregated into boxes. You, you ever see that game where those things pop up and you've got to hit them down with the hammer? Do you know what I mean? Whack a mole. Whack a mole. That's it. That's what we are. You see, the Labour Party's got us all in these boxes, and they get the gov like the conservatives come along. They go, look at that. And when the when they when, when someone's pops up with a problem, they get my whack them down. And then you know the story. Th this is what we're doing. We're, we're we're fragmenting. We're like a hard drive. We need to be def defragmentized. Yeah, but it all starts from the top. It How do you mean? The top. It all starts from the government. I hate it, it to, does. I hate, I hate to keep bringing it back to Sadiq Khan. Just let me know if my mic's too loud. But I hate to keep bringing it back to, 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 to Sadiq Khan. But when you have double-digit rises in homicide and a seventy percent rise in youth homicide, you got to think to yourself, what's going on? Why such drastic changes? On top of that, okay, but. You Sorry, was it any better under Boris? Was it under, any better under Boris Johnson? Say that again. Was it any better under Boris Johnson? Yeah, well, it was, yeah. So there was no it knife crime. There was no. It, no, there was, no, 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 no. You're missing what I'm saying. It, what, I'm not saying it was good, but I'm saying it was better. The figures were a lot lower. Okay, so it's just a progression. Exactly. I wouldn't say it's well, a natural progression, though. So I wouldn't say it's a natural progression, but the point I'm trying to wait, you're trying to make Sadiq like it's his fault. I'm trying to explain to you. Yes, but, but when you look when you look at Sadiq's background, he's links to Hezbollah, he's openly defended he's openly defended terror suspects. He defends right. Al, he defend he defends the Al Quds Day March. He's right, so links to Hezbollah. You gotta think to yourself, without being a conspiracy theorist, is the guy secretly part of the caliphate? Does he want us right. to does he want it's us to destroy each other from the inside out? Spliff, man. Put down the spliff. Let me tell you something. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you're making all kinds of things here, right? Okay, we're talking about knife crime. You're talking about Hezbollah. Where are you, where are you going? So what? Hezbollah is telling him, yeah, go. No, 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 no. You're missing the point. 
Okay, make the point so I can understand it. Because really and truly, I don't get what you're saying. Oh, what's you're saying, the point? You're saying, you're saying that I was taking it to Hezbollah. I wasn't putting it on that. I'm just saying when one man takes over and the figures drastically jump, like not not a tiny bit, drastically jump, then you got to think there's, there's something a little bit deeper down. Okay, so who would you replace uh, Sadiq Khan with? I really haven't got a clue, if I'm honest with you. You know what? They will work with what you got, okay? So the point is this. Where, whoever you put there, you think it's going to stop the knife crime? Can, can I say no, something? No, but the last people that were in power, yeah, exactly. the less, so so maybe if we change, maybe we can radically drop the figures. Obviously, it ain't going to completely wipe it out. You've got to be an idiot to think that. But if we can drastically drop the figures to even back to where they was before Sadiq Khan came around, then then that's that's a big that's a big drop. Look, it's a it's a government it's a conspiracy, right? And, uh, and obviously, you ain't going to cut it all out. It's not going to happen. Where there's poverty, there's always going to be crime. It's that simple. Okay. Who does crime on these council who does Sadiq Khan represent? He represents the Labour Party. Family, real quickly, real quickly, okay. Um, I've got a quick update for you guys, um, just in case um, other people are following the story that's taking place right now over in Florida, I think San Francisco. Um, you know, basically, we've, we've found some new information. So it's in California headquarters, okay. The California headquarters, uh, four people have been shot, okay. Four people have been shot, and one person who is a suspected uh, gunman, I believe it's a woman though, okay? Don't hold me on to this, I'm just receiving uh, new information. Um, you know, they found her, or found the individual, I believe it's a woman with a self-inflicted wound, and I believe she is, or that person has, um, or is deceased right now, okay? So just a quick update on what is actually going on right now over the YouTube headquarters in California. Um, but yeah, let's just get back into this topic right now. Excuse uh, me. I've got my brother Sarah on right Excuse now. Um, hold on, Professor. I'll get you on in a minute. Um, Sarah, okay. I know you're here with us right now. If I can get you to come in and say some words, that'll be awesome. Yes, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, peace, family. Peace. Um, peace. Peace. Um, it's very interesting that this has come up right now because this came up in my conversation with Lee Jasper. Um, I am a firm believer in, especially for young black people, the understanding the system that you're in. Um, I think a lot of black people have relied on a system that they know is not looking out for their best interests and then complain when their best interests aren't met. And so... It's a very vicious cycle that black people seem to go through. They will talk about institutional racism in the police force. <clears throat> They'll talk about all this kind of stuff. And then when the police force acts a certain way, they say, look, and it's like, well, you're the same person that said that police force is institutionally racist. Like, what What did you expect? Um, for me, I said, I'm, uh, you'll see it anyway. I'm a father and my son is five. It's going on six. And... I uh, learned something from Big Bro, as a matter of fact. I spoke to Big Bro, and he said to me, he showed, I've seen his what his children are doing, right? And that's a reflection on, on him. I feel like a, a, a father's children are a reflection of them, right? Uh, because you've taken time to love them. You've taken time to care for them. You've taken time out for them. And I don't see a system doing what a father or a mother would do for their children. So I've always said to people, don't expect the system, whatever system it is, school system, like police system, to love your child. No one can love your child like you love your child. And so if you don't love your child and take time out for your child, then no one is going to. And what I see is a lot of children that are not being taken care of by the parents. That's what I see. I'm with you there. I'm with you there, 100%. Um, and if you was to offer up some solutions, okay, you was to offer up some solutions, what things do you think we could put in place? What strategies, what, um, you know, tactics um, can we actually put in place to curve um, or deter or prevent or um, to intervene with what's going on right now? Can I say something, Callum? Real quickly. Let me just get uh, Sarah to just answer that question. Um, I feel like 
we're asking we're we're well we're assuming that this problem can be fixed overnight and it can't <clears throat> it's a generational problem it generationally deteriorated into this and so you know i'm thinking it may take a couple of generations to get out of it um there's no quick fix i i really do think that the the i really do think that self um determination from black people generally is 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 one of the answers like taking control of your own um community taking care of your own children taking care of everyone that basically looks like you um if we have a problem we've always said if we have a problem who's going to fix it but we you know we can't expect other people to fix it because really and truly it's not really their problem you know and then when it and if it does ever become their problem they look at us and say what's wrong with you guys fix your house you know what i'm saying so if we don't fix in-house our stuff then you know i guess it's going to get progressively worse so but then you're not going to take time out i don't think to fix your house if you don't love your house and i don't and i really do think that a lot of black people don't love themselves i really do think that and it and it comes out in the way in which we treat each other so generationally i think it can be fixed with us actually knowing who we are knowledge of self and starting to love ourselves and do for ourselves the things that we should do and stop asking others to do it mm. if that answers your question all right all right well said well said very powerful um right there real quickly family okay i'm sharing my screen right now okay what i would love for you guys to do if you lot really love um titans tv you love the information yeah i'm asking for donations right now i'm actually asking for donations sure enough you can hit the super chat button right there and donate but what i really want for you from you guys okay is for you guys to hit this like button that is the form of donating to us. That's the form of sponsoring us by hitting this donate button and also hitting this share button, okay? We won't survive and we cannot survive without these types of donations, okay? Hitting the like button and hitting the share button right here to get other people involved with the conversation, okay? To get other people involved with the conversation. And if you truly do love us, oh, shout out to John, John Deme, uh, McDermott, who actually donated, okay? Love for that. But if you truly do love us as well, okay? If you truly do love us and you want to donate, okay? You can also donate by simply spending some time with us on Titans TV, okay? This is what I would love for you guys to do is click this link right here and show your support. Show that you really want other people to be involved, okay? Once you come on, Okay, and you have your say right here, okay, by clicking this link and it jumps you on and to come on behind the scenes right now with these individuals over here. Okay, once you do that and you come on and you have your say, please, 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 please go back down again and share the link with your friends and your family and let them know you was on Titans TV. You was discussing such and such information um, and so forth. Uh, you want to change the community. You want to have, you want to change Britain. You want to change, um, you know, uh, your immediate community for the better. You want to change your, the life of yourself and your family for the better as well. So please, okay, what I'm asking you guys to do, okay, is donate. Donate to us, okay? Donate to us. And I fully well know that some of you guys don't have no money to donate. So all I'm asking for you guys to do is the like button, the share button, and come on to Talk With The Titans and drop your comments, okay? And get other people involved with the conversation. That is that is as much as I really, truly want from you guys, yeah? Everything else is a bonus. Everything else is, you know, monetary that will help us to keep on going. But I want your interaction more, okay? I want you guys to have your to have your voice is being heard i want you guys to reach out to your tribe members okay and get them to be locked in with talk with the titans we want to hear what they have to say we want to hear what's going on in various different communities because it helps us to grow as ours um with inside of ourselves and it helps us to grow as a community because we begin to understand each other we begin to empathize with each, each other's um situations and issues that are affecting their lives and we could speak to other people about what's going on in the uk that we would never have known about prior okay and these types of talks can actually help to heal heal all of the ills and the wrongs that's currently taking place with inside of our vast community so please okay support titans tv donate to titans tv show us the love family show us the love all right um i see we have professor here that wanted to come on and then afterwards i want to jump to shay so professor go ahead 
Um, okay, thanks. Um, back to the back to the um the shooting that happened in YouTube. I was gonna ask in that have you ever noticed since the beginning of this year like this shooting thing become like a, some kind of trend, like some kind of shooting challenge? Like it's never happened like last year, but for some reason in the beginning of the year, it's been happening weekly instead of monthly. It's like it's getting out of control. I know this is like an American thing, but I'm just finding it curious. It's like it's been happening a lot lately. So I was just asking, does anyone like know? Like, does anyone got some like kind of what do you call them? Statics or something? Statistics Statistic. or what do you call them? Yep, so statistics. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah Thanks. Give me a second. Um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Daniel involved. It madness. Yeah. With the conversation. It's, like, and, it's uh, been happening crazy. I mean, people say um it's Donald Trump, but I mean, I'm not supporting Donald Trump, but like he came last year and it wasn't that bad since last year when he went into office. But since the beginning of this year, this went like very violently, you know. I just don't know what's happening. And like this happened, like it's just crazy. Okay, indeed, indeed. Uh, real quickly, I just want to shout yeah. out to my brother, Big Bro. I was well. saying if anyone could answer that. Um, salutes to you for keeping us healthy over here at Titans TV. Um, yep, one second, Professor. Yeah. Let me get Daniel in. I think he's got some information for yeah. you. Yeah. Can I answer the guy that just was speaking, obviously, about the shooting? Um, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong, but I personally feel that because it, it like because it's happening more it kind of influences more people to do it like with the fact you know in london when someone um runs over someone which is disgusting because that's on tv and it's all over the media it then thinks oh someone else thinks that's a good idea i'll do that so with the sh with the sh you know i know there's always been a problem in america but um you know because it's becoming popular it kind of makes other people think hmm shall i do it and it's that ripple effect that keeps going on and um you know about the gun control i'm not saying anything i have my view but i don't believe you know even in the uk when someone shot someone and we have strict gun laws a criminal can always get guns you know you can go to the underworld you can go to criminals but I feel the problem is the more things are happening, it's a ripple effect and then things are happening more and more. So like with the acid attacks, even though the, the guy earlier who said it's been happening for many years, which is true, but because it's now in the media, it's making other people think that's a good idea. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like a ripple effect. We should do it as well. Yeah, like we should do it as well because you see other people doing it. You just, just carry on that kind yeah. of trendy is carrying that yeah, thing it's like there's something more to this right the, the gun people pay money to the republican party so they support them yeah and, and that means that if you can cut that money off then the republicans won't have any uh, any money to do their campaigns and the Dem democrats will be more 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 in power because they have more money do you understand how it's all sort of playing out Mhm, mm mhm. Mm but I know it's like it's always about money uh, to these people. Like, if you think about it, all this, all this, all this nonsense and rubbish could end like overnight if it wanted to. But the real is that if this, everything just goes chill and calm, like it, it will, um, they will lose money. So they, yeah, they have to fill up all those prisons, you know, all the jail uh, cells. But the same with Sadiq Khan, right? It's Labour Party. Now, if he lets all this knife crime happen because he's not putting the money in the right places and Diana Abbott is coming along saying, what we need to do is have more police, 24,000 police officers at £8 each or whatever, when she's coming on offering police officers and said the Khan is creating the problem that we need the police officers for, there's a sort of political agenda. In the same way that these guns in America are killing all these people, there's cries for a, a gun ban, you ban the guns, no money's going to the river. You get what I'm saying? This is your politics that they're playing on us. You can't trust any of them. Yo, gentlemen, to be fair, to be fair, okay, the average 14, 15, 16 year old you on road ain't got a clue about politics. Yeah, we're straying, I feel we're straying from the subject. Um, kids don't care about politics, kids care about money, drugs, and women. That's it. And we're adults, we should be adult enough to see what's being played out here. 
We okay. should be taking responsibility, not the politicians. 25,000 police officers on the street is not going to eradicate nothing. Definitely. Nothing okay. One second. Difficult. Let me just get you to um, one second. I just wanted to quickly give a quick shout out to everybody uh, who's showing the love. Of course, shout out big bro. Shout outs to um, Henry Ebb. Uh, let me shout out to uh, Ridgeway Rob as well. And shout outs to Eddie uh, SOK as well. Okay. Um, and also everybody else who's actually uh, dropping some comments with inside of the comments section, let me shout you guys out for actually um, supporting us and and shout out to you guys who've actually hit the share button on your Twitters, your Facebooks, your Tumblrs, and wherever else, your Reddits and so forth, wherever else, your Google+, Plus, your YouTubes, wherever else you've been hitting the share button. Uh, thank you guys for supporting Titans TV. Thank you for supporting our panel members and thank you for supporting yourselves and your community as well. Big shout out to you guys. Um, I actually wanted to share my screen with you guys again and show you some incredible um, and really touching um, and shocking uh, truths, okay? Let me quickly show that to you. Um, yeah, so sorry, yeah, female suspect. I've got it off here, seven minutes now it's been said. Female suspect dead in YouTube headquarter uh, shooting. The woman was found dead in the building from a self-inflicted wound, uh, police have stated although they're still investigating that at present and still seeing if there's anybody else um, involved in the attack um, from a, um, and this was from a, how can I put it, a, a uh, media report. They actually gave, uh, you know, a, a speech basically. So the police actually gave a speech of what's going on and gave us an update on that. So I know that's what's going on. All right. Um, so yeah, real quickly, let's jump back into it. So murders in New York and London in 2018. Okay. Um, you know, January, New York was leading. Okay. But what happened? What happened in February? February, we had 11 uh, murders in New York. Whereas in London, we had up to 15 murders. Okay. March, we've had uh, 21 uh, murders in New York. Whereas in London, we've had 22 murders. Okay. And so far, we've just entered into April. Okay. We've entered into April. We had a shooting yesterday and a stabbing yesterday as well. And two people already, okay, this is the 3rd of, of April, okay, three days into April, we've already had two murders already, already, okay? So we had a murder on the 2nd, a day later, we had a third murder based upon the wounds that were inflicted on the Tuesday. So... I'm scared. I'm scared because the figures may just rise higher than 22. It may rise up to 25. And I hate to be predicting predicting this um, to occur in April. I hate to be predicting this in April. But it seems as though the way, the way and the rate things are going, it's highly probable, highly likely that this will happen. Um, so yeah, let me quickly show you this because I found this extremely shocking, extremely shocking. Okay. Um, and this is why I say that the parents themselves need to police. Okay. The parents themselves and we as community need to police our youths a bit better. Okay. The police should only be coming in as a last resort, literally as a last resort. If we've done everything right, there shouldn't be an issue outside. If we've done everything right at home, there should be no problems outside. And if there is a problem outside, it should only be that small one to three percent. That's no problem the cracks outside. And if there okay, I don't know who's okay. Please keep your mics muted. Anybody who's in the background, I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you guys. Keep and... your mics. Oh, who's that? Okay, whoever it is it is, please keep your mics muted. Okay, keep your mics muted. I don't want to have to actually mute everybody's mic okay but please keep your mics muted okay so this right here was really shocking this is an event where they're all going to celebrate a young person's 16th birthday party but they felt the need to bring these weapons one of my workers um had a 16 uh 16th birthday party for his niece and at that party, he confiscated 16 knives, 
three bottles of uh, liquid, uh, which he believes was acid. And after he collected all of those weapons, obviously he handed them to police and so forth. But he had to close the party down. And this is an event where they're all going to celebrate a young person's 16th birthday party. But they felt the need to bring these weapons. Um, and for me, that's just an increasing level of violence that young people are willing to perpetrate against each other. And um, we need to address this issue immediately. We definitely need to address this. this is um, we definitely do need to address this immediately. Wow. At Absolute madness, bro. 16-year-old birthday party. It's not even a, a boy's birthday party. It's a girl's birthday party at that. And 16 individuals. 16. I don't think you lot are even clocking this. 16 individuals. That's like two-thirds of a class was carrying knives with them. 16 individuals carrying knives at a 16-year-old girl's birthday party. Three of those, um, you know, three individuals were carrying acid. Possible acid, you know, I'm, I'm going to be uh, politically correct. Possible acid, but I'm pretty sure it was most probably acid. We're dealing with, um, you know, youth workers that quite clearly know the difference between, um, you know, certain, you know, liquids inside of bottles and so forth. They, they, they are quite clued up. That there is incredible. And this is just at a birthday party. I want to know where were the parents in all this, in all of this. I want to know. I really do want to know where were the parents, um, you know, because I don't know. I don't know about you guys here. You know, it was madness. It madness. It was absolute madness for me. When I wanted to go to parties back in the day, it was an absolute madness. I, I either had to go with somebody's uh, mom or dad and be dropped there or my mom or dad will be dropping me to wherever I need to go, okay? It was an absolute madness. And there was no way, okay, I could be carrying around any knives with me. There's no way. Fair enough, if I'm catching busts and whatever else here yeah, with them and them, okay, then them type of madnesses could actually take place. But I'm just wondering, where were the parents in all of this? Where was the elder brothers and sisters in all of this? Where was the aunties and uncles in all of this? Because you must have been given permission to go out. You must have been given permission to go out. Somebody must have said, um, be careful. Let me look after you because you're 16 years of age. I'm assuming some of those individuals will be from the ages of 15 to 18. You're still in school or you're still at college. Possibly still in school, actually. I think you will still be in school. At 16 years of age, okay, most of you guys would still be in school. You're 15, doing your GCSEs, just turning 16. But yet your friends are carrying knives with them. But you go pick up a book and read. You want to carry knife. Oh, well. All right, Nikki, go ahead. Yo, bro, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, basically, that, that's perfect timing, actually, because this is what I was just about to bring up. I was just about to say... How do you feel single motherhood affects these type of kids? You know, growing up without a dad, the single motherhood rates are on the rise every year. Families are more and more fractured and more split every year. Surely that's got to have a big that's got to have a big part to play, you know, on the mental state of these kids these days. So I know it did when I was younger. A lot of us, you know, grew up without dads, and you can't expect. There's only so much a woman can do. They're great. They do what they can. But you need a man to teach a kid how to be a man. You, you can't expect as a woman, you know, to, to teach him how to be a bloke. To teach him morals and values. That's right. That's why we have, uh, you know, an old African proverb that says it takes a village, okay, a village to raise a child. Okay. Real so talk, we bro. need to, I think we need to start you know, reinstill, reinstilling, reinstalling, yeah, reinstalling, sorry, reinstalling family values. Back yeah, we need to bring back these community. family values that are really important. Really do. Um, you know, and even, you know, outsiders on road, like, you know, 
no matter what you were, you could have been Asian, you could have been white, you could have been black, okay? You know, every time I would greet you, shopkeepers, it would be, you know, hello, auntie, hello, uncle. That's, yep. that, that was it. You know, if I was doing something wrong, okay, or sorry, not even myself sometimes, it could be my friends be doing something wrong. My local shopkeeper will be reporting everything back um, to my parents or reporting things back to certain family members. Exactly. What's going on? You know, I used to think that, you know, my parents have some type of, you know, superpowers. They'll be telling me exactly what I was doing when I was, um, you know, walking home from school. I used to go, I used to travel about, I used to have to catch about two schools, two buses, yeah, two buses and a long walk, yeah, to get to my school, primary school. Same thing to do with high school, okay? I, I grew up in the hood, but my parents made sure I went to, um, you know, schools outside of the hood. They quite clearly knew, nah, <laughs> nah, I, I want better for you. But they used to tell me things that yeah, I was your doing. Parents I was like, how? How do you know that? How do you know I was, you know, mucking around? How do you know I was skidding on the ground and all these things here? And it's simply because there was a network. There was actually a network of, um, you know, people out there that would report back to the parents. Okay. Everybody was your auntie and uncle. Everybody was looking out for you. They wasn't doing church it to spite family. you. It's because they want the best for you. It was and a I church family. We don't family. have that anymore. Shay, go ahead, Shay. That, that that was the church family because i remember like it when i was hanging around with my 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 boys like when i was younger right one was from, one his family from jamaica and next one his parents was from africa but we're all born here yeah i'm from irish parents so we're all born here like yeah but when we used to go around i all i heard was like that's my cousin. That's my cousin. Like, they didn't find my cousin, my, my auntie. I turned out, I went, you've got such a big family, man. He goes, it's my church family. And I thought, yeah, I see what you're saying. And that's what kept him in check. Because when they go to church, they to tell each, I see your boy. I see what he's doing. I'll tell you, when, when he got home, he got licked, boy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that, 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 no, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But that's the next thing. The children ain't even getting touched. You can't touch a child now. My parents, when my parents disciplined me, they disciplined me. I understood what they're doing. When anybody else tried it, that was wrong. And that, what, that's what created my conflicts. Can, can, I, can I just say, um, uh, the gentleman that was speaking uh, before about the family values, I think that's a very strong point because, um, you know, I think social media has played a massive impact. Like when I was younger, if I want to go out with my mates, like my parents would drop me to my mate's house or my mates would meet up somewhere. Nowadays, I don't even think parents know what their children get up to. Kids are becoming older, as in like a 15-year-old now or when I was 15, like now they think they're 20 or 25. And the fact is because kids are acting older and their parents might not even know, they might leave the house, say goodbye, and then they've already spoke on social media with their crew to meet up and do something. And I think the blame is one on the family society. Like, you know, everyone should have, and not everyone's blessed to have um, a mum and dad, you know, circumstances happen, but you should have respect from the parents. And I think social media has ruined a lot for people because now people can be influenced online and go out and, their parents don't even know what they're doing. So that's what I kind of think. Indeed. Okay, family. Okay, we've literally, um, we're reaching the end of the show. Okay, unfortunately. And the reason why we're finishing up so supposedly early, although it is um, 10 past 12 right now, is that we want to actually, you know, allow the show to be kind of short enough whereas you know under two hours rather than going two three hours four hours um we want as much ooh, pardon me as many people as possible to actually view this show um to get in contact with us you know to come onto the panels on future shows um you know and to actually just really get involved with these types of conversations so again family if there's any other types of dialogues or any type of issues that's actually affecting you guys here yeah, talk with the titans is literally here 
for that. Okay, we've literally been set up, okay, so that you guys can actually interface with Titans, with certain individuals that have got power, have got influence, have got sway with inside of the community, have got a voice, have got something that they need to actually offer to you guys, okay? And it's all for you guys in the sense that it's you guys that come to us to let us know that there is something affecting you inside of your community that you would like us to either research, number one, or you would like us to present information on it, or you would like us to get this individual on to come and talk about this um, particular subject. So again, family, okay, thank you for actually showing us the love. I'm going to quickly see that, um, you know, if there's any last dying words that you guys actually want to, who are on the panel right now, please get it out. So we're going to go with Caleb first. Hold on one second. Caleb, who else is second? Just unmute your mic and mute your mic. Daniel, second. Shay, third. And that's it. Anybody else going once? And Nikki, fourth. All right, perfect. So that's how we're going to end it out. So first and foremost, let's go to uh, Kalem, then Daniel, then Shay, and then Nikki. Go ahead. Uh, just need you to up your mic a little bit. All right, let me try to up your mic manually. Okay, go ahead. Uh, barely, but go ahead, go ahead. No, it's not working, unfortunately. I could barely hear you. If there's any way you could fix your mic or speak up a bit louder. No. If not, go ahead. Still low, still low. Uh, please try to find a way to fix your mic um, before we close down the show. So, Daniel, go ahead. Yeah, basically, I just want to say a massive thank you to you and everyone here this is the first time i've ever joined something like this and um i think you know good people do exist in our country and you, and you callum are an example um you know it, even if it's just a few hundred watching this if we can all come together from all different races religions backgrounds and we can actually try and make this country a better place then amazing and yeah i just want to say thank you and hopefully i'll come again Definitely. I can't wait to have you on again. And please um, share the link or share this, you know, show with your friends, your families, and hopefully Hello. get other voices on here as well. Um, yes, Caleb, go ahead. You hear me well, Neil? You hear me well now? Yeah, yeah, no problem. We can hear you. All right. all right. First of all, I want to say, you know, big up to y'all doing that good stuff. Big bro, Sarah, all that together. I'm from uh, Holland near the German border. And I really, you know, I feel touched when I heard what you were say, talking about. I have the same thing about social media. You don't even know what the kids are going through uh, on, a, on, you know, at a young age. You know what, this is like a subculture going on. Are, are you really aware of what they're doing? They have their own kind of language. Do you understand what they're speaking? You know, we have the same kind of age. We, have the, we don't have that language. You have to get the knowledge what they're really talking about and if you want to find out it's like it's like a secret society a small secret society can you get into it because you know they, they develop as well in the individual level and they might scatter they get you might even get even more improving the egotistic ideas because they are selfish they get used to parents not uh, at home so they, they're creating their own world what only exists is what is in their own mind, their own world, the media creating their own ideology. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to follow me. So I think that's a, a good thing to be, you know, always dig in mind. That's what we, our children uh, is going on through. And we might not always, underestimate, we might underestimate it quite easy because you cannot see when a child is, lying or you know it's honest they can be really misleading people and people don't might know it they can mislead you, you know how you could you mislead your own parents now kids are smart these days never forget that stuff that's true that's real true 
Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And that's why as parents, we need to get clued up. We need to actually find out what's going on inside of our child's mind, inside of our child's phones, okay? You'll be shocked what you'll find inside of their phones, inside of their social media websites as well. We need to start monitoring our children. We need to start being responsible adults, start being responsible community members and start being responsible parents. Okay, um, Shay. Okay, I'm going to go to Shay right now, and then we're going to close down with Nikki. Shay. Yeah, yeah. What I'd like to say, Callum, is thank you. You're a breath of fresh air, bro. You bought, you bought quality, quality. This is quality street. This is proper quality street. All the people who contributed have impressed me. I love you all. And if yeah. we could do this on a regular thing and get to know each other, then we can, you know, the, the ice is broken and we can start really talking. I love you all. I love you all. Peace. Love you too, man. Love you too. Peace. I love that, man. Our community is finally coming out and finally speaking up. Awesome. Um, Nikki, let me get you on. Yeah, just a quick shout out to you, bro, for staying true to your values. And despite all the name calling, despite all the disgusting shit that's been said, you stay true to yourself. The way you handled the whole Tommy situation was stellar, mate. So hopefully I can get back on the show soon. I'd appreciate that a lot because I do enjoy this show. It's one of my favourites at the minute. So just keep up the good work, bruv. And keep smiling too, man. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Awesome, awesome. Oh, man. So, family, we finally reached the end of this show. But of course, of course, this conversation hasn't ended. This conversation has ended. Time, okay. Yo, yeah, Robert, let me say something. Um, well, before we, before, we, before everything, I'm saying a huge fan of your show. I found you out from last year. Yo, you're great to listen to, and I'm glad that you're not the only. I'm glad you're not that the only person that just talks about like um, Islam and kind of like Muslim stuff. Not saying that's bad, but I like how you diverse like into different cultures with African culture and and talk about um real life kind of situations and make um stuff better. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be on the show and grateful to know you. You do des you do deserve more um, views, like so people can learn from you. Like, because this in the society we're living in, normally negativity is the thing that normally gets the most kind of views, like kind of like attention. Where solutions and making um, this country better, um, we should get more attention from. So I'm very grateful uh, for supporting your channel, and you know, um, thanks a lot. Um, I learned a lot from you. I can't be so bothered. So stay blessed, brother. Beautiful. Love from my brother from yeah, Kevin. Brother. Around the corner. So I love you. Love my brother. Hopefully we will meet up one day and we can actually see how we can improve this world together. Uh, family, okay, before we, you know, anything else happens, I'm going to sign out right now. And we're definitely going to continue this conversation off air. And I would love for you guys to carry on this conversations inside of your houses, inside of your workplace, inside of your community as well. So peace and love. Um, from us over here at Titans TV. I'll see you guys on the other side. Salute, love.